Yeah. So one of the things I want to touch on is um, this whole idea of um, there's tons of miners who are mining, uh, but they don't sell 100 percent of the Bitcoin uh, to pay for electricity. Do you have any sense of the percentages that certain miners are having to sell um, and then how that changes with price fluctuations as well? Right. Are there certain kind of in those tiers you described some that have to sell 100 percent to fund operations and then some that are maybe selling only 10 percent? Uh, and then if you kind of back into the larger miners probably have lower cost power, you can really start to understand how much of the sell pressure on a daily basis is coming from miners. Or is that just too many unknown variables and therefore difficult to uh, to come up with right now? No, that's a great question. In our report, we we model all that out. Um, we have these large tables in the research report, these Excel tables, and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, we understand how much electricity is being consumed by each layer uh, based on their margins. So if you're running an S17 um, at, at six cents, you might be consuming $80 worth of electricity uh, per month, and you may be making 120 in revenue. So you know that you have to sell $80 of your 120, which is, I believe, 70, 75%, right? No, 66%, right? So their margins are, are 33%, um, and they have to sell 66% of their electricity if they're at, for example, $0.06. Cents. And then if they're at $0.05, cents, maybe they only have to sell 50%. And if they're at $0.03, cents, they only have to sell 30%. And that's that's what's key. And, you know, You brought that up, and that's what's so helpful for the network. When these, when these miners who are operating almost at break even and have to sell 80 to 100 percent of their Bitcoin blow out and now their Bitcoin is getting allocated to these efficient miners who only have to sell 30 percent, well, they're holding more Bitcoin. Sell pressure comes off the network. Um, you know, people, a lot of people think that Bitcoin trades a couple billion a day. That's what's important. That's inaccurate. A majority of that is fake Asian trading. It's algos. It's, it's day trading that just creates short term volatility. What moves the price of, of an asset is net fiat in and net fiat out. And that's what in, and, and we're interested in the intermediate to long term. Right. So I'm interested in what's net money in net money out. Miners are bringing net money out because they they're getting new Bitcoin and they're selling it to fund electricity. Now, demand and positive sentiment is what brings funds and hodlers to bring new cash in. And we think, and, and that counterbalances minor sell pressure. Now, that minor sell pressure will redu get reduced when inefficient miners are operating at their break even or below break even. They have to shut off, and now their Bitcoin is going to the miners who only have to sell 10 or 20% of their Bitcoin to fund electricity. Um, and that's how you get these better environments for Bitcoin to rally. We're going to experience that. We just got a taste. We just had that large difficulty adjustment. That was a bunch of old generation equipment getting wiped out. Once we go through the halving, revenue is going to get cut in half. All the old generation equipment, for the most part, is going to shut off. Um, you know, markets, most mar markets are supposed to be one of the most efficient price discounting mechanisms, right? Future discounting mechanisms. Um, I think equity markets, the larger the market, the, the more efficient, right? Crypto markets are probably one of the less efficient markets out there, but there's there's still efficiencies. So we think we think um, we think a lot of the S nines are going to shut off, but some of them are going to flow to areas in the world that just have the cheapest power or subsidized power. It's like pouring a bottle of water at the top of a mountain. It's going to go to the lowest point. That's it's that's how that's how gravity and water works. Um, these S nines are going to flow to areas like Venezuela. They're going to flow to areas like Iran, Kazakhstan, where there's subsidized power or near zero power, or they'll flow to areas where where a utility has excess power, um, and and they might get in, they'll be smart enough to get involved. We have clients uh, capturing the natural gas, um, and they're running at one cent power. That's going to be a boom in the U.S. Um, our the group that we're working with is a is a steel mill, um, and 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 some of their jobs are getting repurposed to Bitcoin mining. There's, I mean, I mean, the revolution that's going to happen um, with with Bitcoin mining is about power. That's the most important component. So those who have the cheapest power in the world, 
are going to start getting involved in this. They already are. Um, and that just makes our network more credible uh, and more secure because you have these, you, you have Bitcoin, you know, our belief is Bitcoin is a commodity in its infancy. And, and when you get a better release of the supply, uh, you get less volatility and it becomes more usable, right? And Bitcoin is just, it's, it's 10 years old. It's a, it's, it's a commodity in its infancy. You look at oil, gold, soybeans, all the suppliers are, they're the ones controlling the supply and they kind of influence price. Well, they hedge out 12 months, right? With their futures contracts and their, and their forwards, um, you know, Cargill, uh, Barrick Gold, Aramco, they all have 20 man trade desks hedging out the product. With Bitcoin mining, it's a Chinese farm or it's some small farm or small farm in the US. And, and, and when Bitcoin starts to sell off, they might puke their coin and they're exacerbating um, the prices in Bitcoin. Uh, and they're, they're the suppliers. So once this becomes more institutionalized, once we get better products, which is happening right in our face, right? CME has their future. Now we have options. We're witnessing Bitcoin becoming more mature. And when the supply gets released smoother and volatility gets sucked out more, it becomes a better store of value um, and it becomes a better digital gold. I mean, if oil was just fluctuating like crazy, uh, it is. I mean, most that people don't realize commodities are some of the most uh, volatile assets. So you, you want to point to Bitcoin and call, talk about volatility. I mean, oil was at 150 in 2009, 2010, and now it's at $20. So there you go. It's lost at 85%, right? So we think there's a lot of things that are happening right now that just make us very bullish Bitcoin. Um, the commodity thing is a bit of a tangent, but but Bitcoin is 10 years old. It's a commodity in its infancy. The difference is no matter what the supply gets released, that's code, but but the people that are going to influence the supply uh, will become far, far more diligent about how it's released. Um, we're going to have better exchanges. We're going to have derivative products. Um, they're going to start using better schedules for treasury management. Volatility will get sucked out. Um, and, and it's going to be a more usable digital gold because volatility gets sucked out and, and now people are going to use it more. Um, it's, it, and most importantly, it's all happening right in front of our face.